the next lecture is about p-value and Taiwan error. So this is a last topic about hypothesis testing. So what is a p-value or Taiwan error? So previous lecture, we talked about set an objective criteria. So we set a limit. Objective criteria that we set is for reject or not to reject the no hypothesis. So we have a two hypothesis. We have the no hypothesis and also the alternative hypothesis. So if you reject the no hypothesis, then we will go for the alternative hypothesis. And also in the previous lecture, we know that for a normal distribution, okay, the larger the absolute z value, okay, the larger the absolute z value, so at the center is zero. So in this case, it's a positive value. In this case, it's a negative value. So we just remove the sign, we just look at the value itself. So the larger the value, the smaller the probability. Towards the end of the curve, the probability will be smaller. Okay. So in this case, we know that this probability will be much smaller than this one. Now we really need to have a specific value, okay? The specific number that we set, okay? So usually the limit that we set is refer to how small a probability we require to reject a no hypothesis. Most commonly used one is what we call the alpha or the significant level. So the most commonly used is a 1% or less, so it's alpha is equal to 0.01. Okay, so it's here. Okay, so this is the criteria. The probability of both sides when you sum it together is 0.01. So here there's 0, 0, 0.015, here there's 0, 0.005. Okay, so the sum of each, the probability of each of these extreme side is 0.01. Or 5%, 0 0.05. So, this is a most commonly used criteria. So, remember just now, we need to set the objective criteria. So, this is a most commonly used objective criteria. We can set either 0 0.01, which is here, or 0 0.05, which is here. Okay. Then we do the calculation okay. and see where the mean of our sample for. Is it inside? The limit or outside of a limit. Okay. So this region where if the value is 4, so if the value is 4 in this region, so this is what we call the critical region. So we reject the no hypothesis. And the value okay, that we set is what we call the critical value. Okay, it's here. So in this case, it's 1.96. Okay. So for how to get the p value? So what we need to do is to get it from the table. So in the lectures number three, you have learned how to calculate the z score. Okay, and then based on the z score, you can get the p value. So for example, this is a table that we use. Okay, so this is a standard normal table. So we know that on in the center, okay, these are the p value. Okay, so these are the probability. Okay. And in the standard normal curve lectures, we learn how to find the probability. Okay, find the probability given a z value. So for example, if z is 1.79, so we need to go to 1.7, so it's this row, 9, then we need to go for 9, 0 0.09, then we can get our p value. I demonstrate this by using the same example, so this is a population mean and also the standard deviation, okay, and then the same question that I asked as in the last lectures, okay, in the previous lecture. And the first thing I need to do is to construct the hypothesis. So this is a hypothesis. So hypothesis need to occur in a pair so that when we reject the no hypothesis, we will go for the alternative hypothesis. 
So this is a sample mean. Okay, this is a sample size. So the question is whether this sample is from this population. So the next thing we need to do, we need to set a significant level. So alpha is equal to 0 0.05 and also the critical value. So for alpha 0 0.05, okay, so you can imagine now we have only learned the two-tail curve, okay, two-tail criteria. Okay. So 0 0.05 is a sum of two sides, okay, so that means that each side is 0 0.025, and this one is 0 0.025. When you sum it up, you get 0 0.05. So this is a limit that you set. So after we determine our statistical hypothesis, the next is to determine the limit. So this is what we do here. Okay. So we need to know the value, okay, the z value. So for the 0 0.025, okay, the z value will be, so we need to go to the table, 0 0.025. So it's 1.9. Okay, it's 1.96. So our limit is on the left hand side of the standard curve is negative. So it's negative 1.96. On the right hand side is 1.96. Okay. So let's say if you calculate the statistic, the Z score. Okay, so this one we're going to do it in the next lecture. Okay. We get 1.17. Okay. So in this case, we can check directly from the table. So if 1.17, 1.17, then we get the p value. So this p value is much larger than our significant level. So is it somewhere here? Okay. But this is a p value, right? So it should be somewhere here. And we at the same time we also look at the z score. And the z-score also much smaller than the critical value. Okay, so these two give, uh, tell the same thing. Okay, you can either use the z-score or what we call the calculator score for our statistical analysis to compare with our critical value. Okay, this is a critical value. Okay, the score compared to the critical value, or we can compare the p-value from our calculated statistic with the significant level, okay? Just compare these two values. If the p-value is larger than alpha, then we will, will, will not reject the no hypothesis. Okay? So in this case, this is much larger than this one, so we, will, we do not reject the no hypothesis. However, it's still possible to make an error in this conclusion. So now we have a hypothesis. We have set the criteria. We have by determined the significant level. And we compare the calculated score for the statistical analysis with the critical value. Or we compare the probability of our calculated statistic with the significant level to make a conclusion. Okay, whether we reject or not reject. But it's still possible we make an error in our conclusions. Okay. So what kind of the error that we're going to make? So for example, in this case, so our conclusion is not to reject the no hypothesis. So we need to make a conclusion after we complete the statistical test. So we're going to write, okay, the hash no is the mean is equal to one six 0.05 cm and this sample is from a population with mean 160.5 cm so you have to state the conclusion so it's still possible to make an error for example so if the no hypothesis is false so let's say if this one is not true and you reject you reject this you reject this okay if this one is false and reject they mean that you have made no error, correct?
if the no hypothesis is true and after you have done the statistical analysis calculations and in your conclusion you do not reject the no hypothesis so in this case there is no error committed however it is possible that if the no hypothesis is true but based on your calculation and your objective criteria that you set you reject the no hypothesis even though this one is true okay in reality okay but you didn't know right but based on your calculation when you when you use your sample to calculate is reject this correct a true hypothesis in this case you commit the type 1 error okay on the other hand if the, the no hypothesis is false but you didn't reject it then you will commit the type 2 error okay so this error could happen okay so that's the reason why the conclusion that we make is not 100 percent so there's still probability that we can commit this error or this area so what is the probability or reliability of our conclusion if not 100 percent so it's go back to the alpha level that we set in this case the probability of committing a type 1 error is 0 0.05 okay, remember this is what we said 0 0.05 so the probability to commit type 1 error is 5 percent so maybe indeed the conclusion that we made to reject the hypothesis based on the sample is not correct then what is the probability of committing the type 2 error in our test just now so the type 2 error is what we call the beta okay type 1 error is alpha okay because the, the probability for the distribution is 100 percent so it's one so our beta will be 1 minus 0 0.05 so it's somewhere here okay so it's 0 0.95 so this is the end of this topic until now you have been introduced to the few concept okay about the hypothesis testing okay why we want to do hypothesis testing what is the hypothesis testing and then the confidence interval okay how to calculate the confidence interval statistical hypothesis how to formulate a statistical hypothesis okay a p value what is a p value and type 1 error okay. at the same time we also uh, cover part of the hypothesis testing procedure so as you can see just now so we need to determine our no hypothesis and alternative hypothesis and then set the criteria alpha perform the statistical test so this statistical test is depend on the your research questions so there are many statistical tests that you're going to learn this course then the next thing after you have select and perform the statistical test you need to compare the test result with the criteria and the last is to make a conclusion so these are the procedure so we're going to do the second part in the next lecture okay where you're going to learn how to perform hypothesis testing